The scar had not pained Harry for 19 years. All was well. Except that it wasn't! Hello everybody, it's me Kevin, and today we are going to do Harry Potter and the Cursed Child script review. Now, I have not seen the play. I have not seen the Cursed Child play, which is this is actually from. So, yeah, my my review is more on the story and script than um, you know the acting or atmosphere, basically in the play. So, yeah, but yeah, so um, I'm gonna review this, which they marketed as the eighth story, 19 years later, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the script now. This is actually very controversial, and I'm going to give you my thoughts, and... So, The Cursed Child starts where the last one, where the death, where basically the Deathly Hallows left off. Harry, Ron, and Hermione send their children to school. Now, now Harry is at, his occupation is basically magical, head of the magical law enforcement, and Hermione is, surprisingly, the Minister of Magic. And Ron is working in the joke shop started by Fred and George. Now, now, like in the last book, the, like uh, Albus, basically Albus, Rose, and Scorpius are starting their new years at Hogwarts. While James has already started his first year at Hogwarts, which was in the previous year. And Lily and Hugo cannot start their first years at Hogwarts yet. They're like two years away or something like that. But anyway, yeah, so basically it starts off from there and, you know, they basically replay the entire epilogue scene in the beginning and it's pretty good so far. I really liked it. I really, it was pretty enjoyable. I was like, oh, seems pretty enjoyable. But anyway, um, anyway, we get to, we get to start meet the new characters, which is Alba Scorpius Rose, like I said, and... You know, it's nice to see that, uh, it's nice to see their interactions now. Because, you know, they're new, we don't know anything about them. So, yeah. You know, but anyway. They're on the Hogwarts Express. You know, it seems like Scorpius and Albus are now friends, basically. Like, I don't know when in the story they start becoming friends, but I think somewhere around there they become friends, basically. Yeah, so anyway, um, around this time, uh... People are admiring the Potters, you know, because they're the sons of Harry Potter. Anyway, so, yep, so, in the beginning of the story and in the ending of the Deathly Hallows, they said, they mentioned on how he was worried if he was going to be put in Slytherin. But Harry tells him, but, but Harry tells him it's going to be fine, but if you, it really means that much to you, then, then ask the Sorting Hat to be placed somewhere else. So they do, so he doesn't do that here, actually. Instead, he lets the Soaring Hat choose his house for him, or basically figure out which house he would be best placed in. And he is actually in Slytherin. Now, I kind of wish they did build it up to this, his fear on being put in Slytherin. But then again, we kind of did get that in the first Harry Potter book. But it would have been nice to see. But anyway, they, they do actually put him in Slytherin. And people start to disregard him because... Well, Potter was a Gryffindor, and some of his and one of his sons is a Gryffindor, so yeah, you're not like your father, and you know that's basically where the story starts to seem to going in that direction. It seems to be more going to the direction of you're not like his father, which I do like. It does seem to give more like an identity crisis for for Albus, and people are giving him a hard time, especially at the Quidditch class where people are like you're not like your father because you're not doing well so yeah but then the story starts to fall apart a bit and that's where they skip basically to three more years now they do it like two sentences of each year and then they start to land at their final i mean, at the fourth albus's fourth year and what's funny is they do it in less than 50 pages less than 50 pages four years have already passed or Albus is already in his fourth year. And that's pretty annoying. Why did they do that? That's annoyed me so much. Why did they do that? It starts to become more and more apparent that the story is not going to be focusing more on, like, Albus's year at Hogwarts. It's going to be focused on something else, which I'm going to bring up later or pretty soon. Now, anyway, 
Albus is having a tough time at Hogwarts. You know, people are being mean to him and such, and, you know, people are, are being jerks. So, yeah, and Potter does try to help. He gives him some advice, like, you know, have friends and such, and Albus does have friends, and that's Scorpius, but Scorpius is also not having a good time either because people have started a rumor that he is the son of Voldemort. And people say, like, they used... Like, the Malfoys were so desperate to continue their line that they decided to go back in time and get a child, which is stupid. Pretty stupid, actually. Like, why would they think that? Like, okay, maybe it's a little weird that... I guess people were a bit... Like, like what the... How are they not in jail vibe, I guess? I guess they were more like, why are the Malfoys not in jail? And that's a question that I myself have been... Asking myself, why is the why is Lucius Malfoy not in jail? I can understand like Draco's mother and Draco, but not Lucius. Like that makes no sense. But anyway, yeah, things are not going well, and they skip the interesting stuff like Albus not like Albus is not happy at Hogwarts. You know all of that. Harry tells Albus like you know McGonagall's telling me you're not doing so well. You know, and they also skip that part that Draco's wife dies like they have one sentence of like scorpius like being like sad and they even say like she's not feeling well but that was like one sentence of being like oh she's not feeling well and then they're like oh shocker she's dead and i'm like why did they skip over that that was interesting but no instead they the the writers thought hey they don't want any of that or what's more poss likely is that they wanted to focus on the other parts of the story and they had to cut out one part of the story. And sadly, they did that, which is unfortunate and actually a dumb idea seeing how the rest of the story starts to turn out. Now, anyway, what happens is this. So it's at the fourth year now. And Albus, you know, not doing well in school and such. People are mean to him and such. You know, he he's kind of, he really hates that He's kind of not liking that he's the son of Harry Potter because people will think you're not like your father. So, but anyway, Harry, it's the night before Hogwarts Express. Harry actually found a time turner. Now, he went up, a, up against this guy and he won the battle and he found a time turner that the guy was holding. So anyway, he gives it to Hermione and goes home and, you know, and who should meet him? Amos Diggory, the son, I'm mean, the father of Cedric Diggory, and how did he know that he found a time turner? Well, he says he heard it from a rumor that, you know, he has a time turner, so he wants Harry to go back in time using the time turner and save his son. And I'm like, how did he already find out about the time turner already? It felt like less than. If it was in like less than a day that he already found out. How did people already figure out or start making rumors that he found a time turner? Anyway, Harry lies and says no, you know, because why would he go back in time and save Cedric? Like, his death was tragic. He understands that, but like, that would be kind of dumb. Like, that would be, like, there would be lots of consequences or whatever. And plus, time travel, the time turners don't work that way. And I'm going to explain that later. Or something like that. I'll explain my whole time turner rant later. Now, anyway, you know, Albus is listening in, and during the conversation that he hears, is he meets Delphine, who is actually the niece of Amos Diggory. Now, yes, yeah, so we just meet her, and she's like, oh, if you want to talk, uh, meet me in this other area, you know, sometime. So anyway, Harry now gives presents the to his children, you know, because they're about to go to Hogwarts the next day, and he decides to give Albus his last present, and it is actually the blanket that, that Harry, okay, it's the blanket that, that Harry had with him when Albus gave, uh, Harry to Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon in the, you know, first Harry Potter book, and, you know, this blanket was, from Lily and you know symbolized love and affection for Harry and it was you know had very good meaning and it was like I want to give it to you but how Albus does not take this like gift too kindly because you know things aren't going well in school and you know he kind of wish he got something else you know he, he's he's kind of in a bad mood basically because he's going back to a place where people are mean to him 
So anyway, he and his father have an argument, you know. They go back and forth. And then Harry Potter utters the lines that I will never forget from this story. Albus says, no, I just wish you weren't my dad. Harry, seeing red, says, well, there are times I wish you weren't my son. What? Harry Potter just said that he does not wish Albus to be his son? That is stupid. Why would the writers think that that's what this story needed? That Harry says Harry does not wishes that he, Albus is not his son. That is totally out of character for him. Harry, who lived with the Dursleys, who made him basically like scum in the family. That's the same Harry Potter in the story? The person who was able to find love and affection in the Weasley's home is able to find comfort and friends in Hogwarts. Says that Al he wishes Albus was not his son? That is stupid. It is the stupidest thing in the story. And there's more stupid things like that in the story as well. But anyway, as we continue along with the story, anyway, they have an argument, you know, things and pretty rough for him and his son. Harry starts having dreams that in his scar his scar's starting to hurt and he's like, uh, my scar's starting to hurt. It's not a good sign. Maybe something bad's coming back. But anyway, that happens many times in the story. He starts having dreams and such, and yep. So anyway, Albus is in the Hogwarts Express now, you know, sitting with Scorpius as he usually does. And anyway, what happens is this, like, uh, what, like, before that, like, Rose tells Albus that Harry did find a time turner, and seeing how he now knows the information that Harry lied, now decides with Scorpius, tells this to Scorpius, not Rose, that they should go back in time and save Cedric. <sighs> I'm going to get back to that later. But, you know what, no, I'm going to do it now. Why would this, why would they think that's a, that's a story we need? Why? Why would they think that? That is so dumb. And this is where the story starts to fall apart. So anyway, you know, they escape. They meet Delphine. They escape the Hogwarts Express. They meet Delphine and allow, you know, basically force Amos. Well, well, they try to convince Amos that they should let them go back in time, use the time turner. He reluctantly agrees. So they have Polly. So anyway, Delphine... And Scorpius and Albus plant, like, get Polyjuice Potion and turn into Harry, Ron, and Hermione. They go into the Ministry of Magic, and, you know, seeing how Hermione's minister, they search her office, and they find this. They find out that it's actually in a bookcase, and they have to solve a riddle. What? Hermione Granger, the smartest witch of her age, no, the brightest witch of her age, hides a time turner in a bookcase? What? 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 Young lady, you thought the best place to hide a time turner in a bookcase? A bookcase? That is the stupidest thing you have thought of in this story. It is out of character for you. And why am I yelling at a Lego figure? Yeah, another out of character moment for Hermione there. But anyway... Anyway, we have to continue along. They get the time turner, they go to the Forbidden Forest, and they use it, and they go back in time to save Cedric. Now, they go to the first task, and what they do is they want to disarm him so they would kind of discourage him from trying to win the Trial Wizard Tournament. They succeed in disarming him in the first task. They come back, and Harry, and basically Harry and Ron find Albus and Scorpius. Now, Delphine did not come along because, you know, they said that she's kind of too old now, you know, that she'll be out of place. So she agrees. But anyway, it turns out the time, like, they went to an alternate time, which me, And the only thing that changes is that Ron and Hermione are no longer together. What? Now, the reason is this. Like, like they were dressed, Albus and Scorpius were dressed up as Dermastrang. So, that means they ran into Hermione, and, you know, she was a bit suspicious of them, actually. And, you know, seeing how they disarmed them, she thinks that they sabotaged them, which means 
that Victor Crumb must have sent them, which means he's cheating, which means she, when Victor asks her out, she declines, which means Ron is free, asks Hermione, and she says yes. But they claim that jealousy is actually the factor that, that made them love each other, which means since there's no jealousy there, they're not going to be in love, and apparently he danced, Ron later dances with Padmill after the dance or something, or during the dance or whatever. And that's so stupid, because here's the thing. Jealousy is a side effect of love, not the main cause of it. So that is stupid that they think the writers thought of this. It's so dumb. And also, I'd like to mention that Hermione is now an evil Snape and the new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher. And I just find that so stupid. It's just dumb, out of character. No way would she become this. Anyway, you know... Harry tells Albus, you can't meet Scorpius again because... Because Harry actually talked to Bane while looking for his son. You know, because they found out that they he did not go to Hogwarts. And Bane tells him that there's a dark cloud surrounding Albus. And he assumes Scorpius, you know, because he's a Malfoy. And, you know, Malfoys are usually jerks to them. Jerks to the Potters. Except this Malfoy is actually nice to Albus. And after that dumb decision Harry decides to make, you know, things aren't going well with their friendship. But then they decide this. They have to go back in time again to the second task. This time, humiliate him so they can discharge him. So they do. And during this, Harry realizes his mistake and decides to look for Albus. And, you know, basically be like, I'm wrong. Okay, sorry about that. But before that happens, Scorpius and Albus go back to the second task and use the time. Well, they already used the time turner. And they disarm, well not disarm him, they, they expand Cedric's head. And then what happens next is that they also put fireworks saying Ron loves Hermione or whatever. I'm pretty sure they, they, they did that. They come back to the present, but this time it's different because Albus is not with Scorpius. And apparently what happened is, is this. It's that... Because they expanded and humiliated Cedric, Cedric became a Death Eater. Which is dumb! Why would Cedric Diggory become a Death Eater? If you read the books and watched the movies, you can tell he was a nice person. But mostly, I'm talking more about the books because this is more because this is actually following more on the books, not on the movies. Now anyway, if you read the books, you can tell he seems like a nice guy. He doesn't seem bad or anything. He actually seems like a nice, good friend that you would have. He seems like a nice guy to talk to and all of that. But no, this story they say, he's evil now, which is dumb and stupid. Why would they do that? Why? Why would they think that's what Cedric is? He would become evil. And anyway, Cedric apparently was... Cedric was apparently, like, be, since he became evil, he kills, actually kills Neville Longbottom in the Battle of Hogwarts, which meant he didn't kill Nagini, which means Harry would fight Voldemort and die, basically, because they didn't destroy the last Horcrux. So, I'm gonna go more on that later, but anyway. Anyway, uh, later on, you know, and apparently Umbridge is now the headmistress of Hogwarts, which I actually would see that actually happening. But anyway, she's headmistress of Hogwarts. The world is now more of a anti-Muggle and Muggle-born state, you know. And yeah, so Scorpius wants to go back to his timeline. So he needs to find Professor Snape because he apparently, I guess, Albus tells him that Snape was actually a good guy. But anyway, he finds Snape and is unable to convince him because Snape actually doesn't really, you know... He's trying to keep his act together, like, oh, this guy's accusing me that I used to work for the good guys. But anyway, he's able to, but he was able to have Snape help him when he mentions Lily. So he's like, all right, come with me, Scorpius. Hurry up. So anyway, he takes them to Ron and Hermione, who were actually in hiding. And, you know, he tells them everything, and so, he tells them everything that happened. And, you know, and then what happens next is this. They decide to go back and go back to the first task and stop Albus and Scorpius from disarming him, so, Cedric. So anyway, they actually succeed in doing that. They stopped Albus and Scorpius from disarming Cedric, but there was a little glitch, and when they returned to the present, 
they're outside, which they were there inside of a Whomping Willow or something like that, and now they're outside, which means they're out in the open. And there were actually a lot of Dementors around the area, which means now they're going to start attacking them. But anyway, Ron and Hermione actually decide to stay back and defend, and or like, you know, distract the Dementors. So anyway, what happened? So that means they have to go. Snape and Scorpius have to go to the lake so they can go to the last, the the second task, which they do. And then Scorpius, you know, but then you know, like during this, like. Ron and Hermione, you know, because they're in love with each other now, you know, because they basically always were. You know, they say they have a son and a daughter, and this, and their actual, and the actual timeline that Scorpius is in. Then they kiss, which was, I don't know, like, I don't know, it's just like, yeah, you do know there's a bunch of Dementors, right? <laughs> anyway, the Dementors then pull them apart, suck their souls out, and that made a, kind of a sad, but I guess a bit of a nice scene that they... You know, I guess they'll be, their souls may be sucked out, but hey, at least they uh, kissed each other and are, I guess, in love basically forever with, in their souls, I guess? I don't know, but the deaths usually don't hit you that hard. Like, I did kind of like that death, but you know they're going to be alive in the alternate, in the real timeline. Anyway, now anyway... Snape runs into Umbridge, who actually knows that Snape was the good guy. So Snape's like, he just smiles and, you know, he's like, how long have you known? And then later on, just takes Umbridge down and then the Dementors start to attack or start to come towards him. So Snape uses his Patronus and distracts them, lets Scorpius go to the second task. So Snape gets his soul sucked out as well. And this scene is kind of sad, more sad than Ron and Hermione's death, because... You know he dies in the actual timeline, and he dies in his alternate timeline. So it is kind of sad that he dies in both. But anyway, Scorpius goes back to the second task, stops Hedrick from expanding, then they go back to the present, and he and Albus are now at their actual timeline. And Harry and, Harry and you know, Harry and their families basically find Albus and Scorpius, but Scorpius claims that he lost the time turner, which means the power's still out there, which means, shoot, we're screwed. We need to find it now before anything else bad happens. So anyway, yeah, so, yeah, so they're punished, you know, for what they did, basically. And, but McGonagall also calls out Hermione for hiding it in a bookcase, because, yes, why would you hide it in a bookcase, Hermione? Why? Even McGonagall thinks that is stupid for you to do. You are the Minister of Magic. You should have hid it in a vault or something. Don't hide it in a bookcase with riddles. Now, anyway, you know, things are better now for Albus and Scorpius. You know, they're a bit happier, I guess. Well, they're a bit more happier, I guess. Nice to be friends again and such. But Scorpius then tells Albus that he actually still has the time turner and he wanted him to destroy it. So basically, uh, they're like, okay, let's do that. Which is kind of stupid, actually, because why couldn't he just say, hey, I have the time turner, let's destroy this thing now. You know, they could have done that and then done. Boom. Problem solved. Anyway, when they're about to destroy it, or dis debating how to destroy it, Delphine pops up out of nowhere again. She's like, hey guys, uh, what are you doing? Oh, we're going to destroy it because, you know, alternate timelines and stuff. We don't want that happen happen again. And she's like, okay, now we'll do it. Anyway, and but then Albus notices a tax. So they... They get the Time Turner, and they go to the Forbidden Forest, and before they leave, actually, they tell Daphne that she should stay because she she might jeopardize the plan because, you know, she's too old and such to be at Hogwarts, so they dress up as Durmstrang so they fit in more. So, anyway, Albus and Scorpius go back in time using the Time Turner to the first task, and their plan is to stop Cedric from, you know, winning, so they have to dis disencourage him so they disarm him and before they actually disarm him they meet Hermione who actually became very suspicious of them seeing how she's they're not acting like Darmstrangish or whatever or something like that like she notices that they don't really have accents and you know and how do they know her name so anyway they succeed in disarming Cedric they go back to the Forbidden Forest where Harry and Ron find them but but there's something different happened. What happened was because 
because Hermione got suspicious of them and later connected that they disarmed Cedric, she thought that that was Victor Crumb who, you know, used those two to basically, they used, they, like, Ben Crumb sent some people to stop Cedric from winning, sabotage, basically. And, you know, once it, you know, seeing how she guessed this or came up with this theory, when Victor Crumb asks her out, she says no, which means when Ron asks her, she says yes. But apparently, jealousy is the reason that Ron and Hermione got together, which means they never got married, and that's stupid. Jealousy is a side effect of love, not, not the cause of it. It is stupid. Why would they think that's how love works? Like, oh, she's jealous. Love's created. No, that's not how it works. So anyway... What happens next is this. What happens is that, uh, basically, because because of that, you know, Ron's married to someone else, and Hermione suddenly becomes evil Snape, which is dumb. She's defense against the dark arts teacher, but she becomes evil Snape, and I'm like, why? Well, not evil Snape, but she basically becomes the next Snape. It is so stupid. Why would they think Hermione's like this? Ah, uh, so anyway, after that, basically, Harry tells Albus not to meet Scorpius. Now, he hasn't changed, actually, to be honest. And, uh, he's, you know, he says this is because, like, Bane tells Harry, like, while Harry was looking for Albus, who they found out that he was missing because he was not in Hogwarts. So anyway, Bane tells Harry that a dark cloud surrounds Albus, and he assumes Scorpius. And why would he assume it's Scorpius? Like, okay, fine, he's a mouthful, I guess, but that's it. You don't really know much about his son. Like, you really don't. That's it. I mean, why would you think that? Sure, Draco may have been mean to you earlier that day, but that gives you no reason to think that Scorpius would be mean. So, anyway. <sighs> Albus and Scorpius, you know, their friendship falls apart a bit because they can't see each other. But then, what happens next is this, like... They meet up together and like, okay, we need to go to, we need to go back to the second task and basically, you know, go back to the second task, humiliate Cedric. So they do that. But before that happens, Harry realizes the error of his ways and is like, oh shoot, I need to fix my mistake. I need to go find Albus and tell him that I was wrong. But before that happens, they already go back in time. They expand Cedric's head when he was underwater and humiliate him basically. And then they go back to the future, you know, because they succeed in humiliating him. But Albus is not with him. Why is that? Because Cedric was so humiliated so much that he apparently became a freaking Death Eater, which is dumb. Why would the writers think Cedric becoming evil would be something that Cedric would be? He is a Hufflepuff, and if you don't know, Hufflepuffs rarely become evil or rarely become bad at all like they rarely do i don't understand why people why this the writers thought hey he's gonna become evil when certainly if you read the books is not true because he's a nice guy he seemed like you know he'd be like a nice person to talk to and such you know it's just horrible and bad writing why would they think that so anyway Anyway, because Cedric became evil, he kills Neville Longbottom in the Battle of Hogwarts, and because Neville killed Nagini, that means that means Harry can't kill Voldemort because the last Horcrux hasn't been destroyed, which means there, which means he dies, and then you know Voldemort is ruler, which means Umbridge is headmistress of Hogwarts, and they're in a living in an anti-Muggle and Muggle and muggle-born society so yeah anyway uh scorpius wants to change it back to the real timeline so he wants to look for snape and snape is like you know snape is reluctant at first because he you know it's because at this point he's like thinking he's just accusing him of doing something he's trying to keep his control together not to be found out as a good guy but then when scorpius mentions lily he agrees you know he's like come with me scorpius so he takes him to Ron and Hermione, and he tells he tells them everything about the what he and Albus did, and 
you know, they agree to help and they go back in time. Go to the first task and stop and stop Albus and Scorpius from disarming Cedric, which they succeed at. And then when they come back, there was a little glitch and they're now outside of their hiding place. Now their hiding place was more underground, you know, near like connected to the Whomping Willow. So now they're surrounded by a bunch of Dementors, which are surround, which are in Hogwarts right now, you know, because Umbridge is now control of the area, basically. So, anyway, that happens, and you know they have to, they have to escape. But Ron and Hermione have to sacrifice themselves, basically. They have to distract the Dementors, and you know, before this, they do have a nice, touching scene, you know, about having a a son and a daughter, and then they just kiss, but then they get their soul sucked out because they didn't yell expect a Patronum. Maybe they should have done that first, done expect a Patronum, then make out. But either way, they probably be they probably get their soul sucked out anyway. So I guess they re, guess they yellowed it. Now anyway, Snape and Scorpius go back, basically go to the lake to uh, to use the second time turn. I mean, use the time turner to go to the second task. But before this, Umbridge has already found out that Snape is the good guy and confronts Snape. But Snape takes her down. But that gives away that Snape's a good guy. So Snape decides to distract Dementors. So, Snape uses his Patronus, which is most famously Lily. Ours. So, well, crap, I meant not Lily's. It was a doe because it was, well, his Patronus is basically the same as Lily's, which was a doe. So, ours. He gets also gets his soul sucked out, which is a little sad seeing how he dies in both universe, both timelines. Anyway, Scorpius goes back. Basically goes back and uh, succeeds in stopping Albus and Scorpius from expanding Cedric's head. And they come back and he's in the present or his real timeline and he's with Albus. And they get find, found by Harry and McGonagall as well. So, yep. So McGonagall punishes, basically gives them a punishment saying like they have detention and no hogs meets for Scorpius and Albus. And she also calls out Hermione, which is very much needed because what she did was stupid. Why would she think hiding a time turner in a bookcase is a good idea? You are the smartest witch of your age. <sighs> Man. Anyway, yep, so, yeah. So, yeah, so Albus and Scorpius, yeah, well, actually, wait first. Scorpius at first claim, well, actually tells the Harry and McGonagall that they lost the time turner. So, you know, they're looking for it, but it turns out Scorpius still has a time turner. He actually lied to him because he wanted to destroy them, which is stupid because you could have, they would have probably destroyed it anyway because of what you guys just told them. But anyway, after that stupidity, they, Albus and Scorpius decide to destroy the time turner. But before they're, but while they're debating on how to destroy it, you know, because it's like the end of the day, they're actually snuck out actually to destroy it on the Owlry. Delphini finds them and is like, hey, what are you guys doing? They're like, oh, we need to destroy this thing because it's dangerous and we don't want any of this to happen again. She's like, okay, do it, destroy it. But Albus notices that she has a tattoo and she says it was like an Argoway or something. And I'll. And Scorpius remembers that that they mentioned that name in the second timeline, which means she must be evil, and she basically tricked them into trying to change the future, or into trying to change the past to change the future. And, you know, she basically admits it and takes both of them down, snaps her wands, and ties them up. So around this time, they're missing again. <laughs> you know, Harry and his family are like, crap. We, they're missing again. So, seriously, Harry, you need to put a tracking device on this kid. He keeps escape. He keeps, like, going missing every two, every two days or something. So, anyway, yeah, that happens. And, you know, turns out that, uh, you know, they have to go back to the third task and stop. Uh, I don't know. They have to go back to the third task and humiliate Cedric so he becomes a Death Eater. Which is stupid because why would you? Why would he be a Death Eater? And another stupid part of that plan is, why couldn't you just go back any time at all? You could have gone back in time, killed Harry, then done. That's what you wanted. Her plan is to save Voldemort. 
But if that was really her plan, she could have just gone back in time at when Harry was a baby or something. Kill Harry, or any other time Harry was alive and just kill him right there. It's just stupid. So anyway, they have to do that, and, you know, they basically do, and such. <sighs> this is where the story is about to turn to crap here, but before we get there, we have to continue on. So anyway, they go back to the third task, basically, and, uh, okay, I, I'm gonna have to, okay. So they go back to the third task, and when, uh, you know, during, but during this, like, while they're on the third task trying to find humiliate Cedric, ironically, Cedric actually stops her plans by basically disarming her, and, you know, it was kind of sad to think that, you know, like, they based, Cedric basically saved their lives, Albus and Scorpius's lives, and for him to run off and go back to basically where he'll be killed later on, it is kind of sad, but then... That sadness is gone as soon as you remember, oh wait, this is the cursed child, this is where Cedric is evil if you humiliate him. So you kind of lose all that emotional impact that, the, that he suddenly has. I'm guessing that's what they were trying to do with Cedric stopping him. Basically, you know, it was kind of sad. I guess that's what they were trying to do. Like, you know, like, yes, he's gonna die later. But it's kind of tarnished when you read, when you read the beginning of the, like, basically... The rest of the story from that point on, or the, or at this point in the story, you're like, that's stupid. Like, like because he's gonna be evil later. Or, if he's humiliated, which is dumb. So anyway, Delphine uses the time turner, they go back with her, with her but to, and then they destroy it, but she made it at her destination. Now the destination is actually October 30th, 1981, which means her plan is, Kill Harry Potter. Actually, no, it's not. That's not her plan. Her plan's actually to to save Voldemort from dying, so that she's gonna try to convince him. Now let's go to the plot twist that is oh. revealed. Harry, Ron, Hermione, Ginny, and Draco, and Harry and Draco at this point are friends. Actually, you know, because like they kind of have a talk about like friends and such, and you know, like even though Draco was a bit of a jerk to him early in his story. He did kind of redeem himself a bit when he was talking about friends and such, how, you know, friends are a good thing, Harry, you know. That's that's why you and Hermione and Ron were tight, you know. You guys were buds, you know, like Albus and Scorpius are buds. Harry realizes, that's how Harry realized the error of his ways. And then, they realize a big, big discovery about... <sighs> Words are revealed on the wall... All, all the walls of the auditorium. Dangerous words. Horrible worlds. I will rebirth the dark. I will bring, I'll bring my father back. What? You're telling me. This is what they're telling us. Voldemort had a freaking daughter, and we find out that it was actually Bellatrix that had the that they had a daughter with. And I'm like, why? Why would they think that's a good idea? No way would Voldemort have a daughter with Bellatrix. Because here's the thing. Around the Deathly Hallows. Voldemort was pretty angry at Bellatrix, and she, you know, because, because, like, her sister was mar married to a Muggleborn, although we didn't hold that much against her, because she's still pure blood, and she's still against one of her sisters, but, like, he's pretty angry at Bellatrix, like hey, oh, sorry about the cut, because storage and stuff, but I fixed it, now, anyway, Voldemort was out angry at Bellatrix for, you know, letting... Harry and and his friends escape Malfoy Manor. And he was also pretty angry at Bellatrix for failing at their duties and receiving the prophecy in the Order of the Phoenix. That's what I also think is stupid. It's also out of character for Voldemort. Why would Voldemort have a child? He thinks mostly about himself. He's selfish. He doesn't think that he's gonna die. That's why that was one of his big weaknesses in in the Harry Potter. Like, that was one of his big weaknesses. That's why he died. That's why he lost against Harry Potter. Because he didn't think that he would die, and basically, he thought he was invincible. He was egotistical. He thought nothing but himself. That's why. That's what Voldemort is, and that's stupid. <sighs> anyway. So anyway, Albus and Scorpius are able to send a message to Harry that he... That they are in October 31st, 1981, the day that his parents are killed. 
So basically, they go back and they make a plan to stop Delphini. So their plan is this. Their plan to stop Delphini is by, you know, they they have Harry transfigure into Voldemort, distract her, like lure her away from the real Voldemort, and try to, you know, take her down in a crossfire, you know, take him down with spells and such. And this plan nearly works until Harry, you know, while talking to Delphini, starts to transform into himself. And because that happens, that means that, um, you know, the plan starts not going its way. And it starts falling apart, but but then they eventually take down Delphini and, you know, they take her down. But now that they've taken her down, there's another scene that happens. They know Voldemort is nearby now, and they witness Harry, Harry's parents get killed. Now... I will admit, they never really showed us Harry's actual, like, experience seeing his parents die. But technically they did, because in the Deathly Hallows, they actually give us how the how they died. Like, the full details of how he died. Voldemort kills a kid, and goes in there, like, goes, like, he kills a kid who is dressed up for Halloween. Kills him, and then he goes to Harry's house, and they kill both of his parents. They give us details of that. So this kind of felt like, this kind of felt like reused again, and I don't know, it's just like, it, like they're trying to get you emotional impact and such, but like, because we've already seen that in another book, you kind of lose that emotion a bit. Like, it's sad seeing them die, but I don't know. Let's just move on. So Harry, who has trouble, actually had trouble connecting with his son early in the story, is now able to connect with his son more, you know... They become, he becomes a better father, thankfully. And now Albus is, you know, being is having a happier time at Hogwarts. And that's where the story ends. Harry connecting well with his son again. So that's where it is. There are actually lots of inconsistencies in this story, and they're very and these inconsistencies actually are very significant to the plot of the story, actually. And I'm gonna name a few of them. One is the time turner. Now this inconsistency bothers me so much because here's how the time turner worked. Let's say I wanted a sandwich or no, let's say I wanted chicken, but I was too lazy to go to the grocery store and get it. But then later on, I was like, let's go get chicken. So I go to the grocery store and get, and decide to go get chicken. But apparently it's sold out. They're all gone now. But what actually happened was future you actually used the time turner to get the chicken. So they actually sold the, all the chickens out. But you and the real few and the present decides, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the time turner and go back and takes the chicken. So that's how it worked. Because here's the thing. Time turners work where like when you wanna go back in time, you and your in the future have already done it. That's how it works. But here it's more like go back in time, change the future, that's it. It's kinda dumb and cliche a bit. Like they did the usual cliche where, like, oh, characters in different timelines are different, different personalities, different timelines. It's kind of stupid. And they have basically characters die because they're safe with that because in the other timeline they're alive. It's very dumb and stupid, and I don't know why they messed that up. Another part is Snape's death. Now, this inconsistency really irks me as well. Because here's the thing, although I did like Snape in the story, he seemed he didn't seem changed at all, actually. He seems to be one of the few characters that actually did not get out of character at all. His death makes, like, him not dying makes no sense. Because here's the thing, he, like, Voldemort wanted to, like, couldn't use the Elder Wand very gratefully because it won't accept him. And... He thinks the reason for that is because Snape killed Dumbledore, because the Elder Wand belonged to Dumbledore. And in the history of the Elder Wand, whoever kills the master, or the owner of the Elder Wand, is now the owner of the Elder Wand. So he thinks, well, Snape killed Dumbledore, which means, then that means I have to kill him. But here's the thing. Why did he somehow, for some reason, not think to do that? Because why? Like, why would they think that? Why? Like, seriously. They mentioned, like, Harry dueled Voldemort. And Voldemort did not look for Harry yet. So, that means Snape would have died in both timelines, regardless if Cedric is evil. Because Neville...
Because even if... Because no one would mention Neville Longbottom's significance. Because even by Professor Snape, they made it sound like he was insignificant. And that was Snape acting in character of the, you know, Death Eater guy. So, that makes no sense. And... Why, like, Voldemort would have still found the connection and would have still killed Snape either way. And Harry also, like, Harry, like, like, there's no way Voldemort would be able to kill Harry. That's another thing. Why would he, why would the Elder Wand kill Harry? Because the Elder Wand actually belonged to Harry because Draco disarmed Dumbledore, which made it the Elder Wand his, which meant, but until Harry disarmed Draco, which meant the Elder Wand was his. That's another inconsistency I can't stand. It's even worse than Snape's death. Or like the whole Snape doesn't die. That's even worse than that. So anyway. Yeah, another thing I hate is Cedric is evil. That's more of an out of character moment. But yeah, another out of character moment I have to say is Hermione hiding in a freaking bookshelf and becoming Snape in the first alternate timeline. Harry saying he didn't want Albus as a son. And a final one I want to mention, inconsistency, is the Polyjuice Potion. Now, in the Chamber of Secrets, it was mentioned by Hermione that it takes one month to make Polyjuice Potion. But here, it takes about a day. They said they had to make Polyjuice Potion, and they took them a day. That, that changes, if that retcons, like, if this is canon, that means they had about a day to make the Polyjuice Potion, and they could have used it on Draco... They could have used it to find out information on Draco and find out whether he was the person who opened the Chamber of Secrets in the second Harry Potter book. And that makes no sense. Why would they think that Polyjuice Motion takes a day? That's stupid. So anyway, yeah, that's inconsistencies right there. Characters are a little more better than the inconsistencies and the story itself. Now, the characters, it's nice seeing Harry, Ron, Hermione back. And it's also like nice seeing Ginny. Well, actually, I should have said Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Ginny, and Draco, and McGonagall, and Snape, and... That's a lot of ands. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, there's a lot of characters you see return. There's also Dumbledore, who's in a painting, basically. But yeah, so, uh, it's nice seeing them back. But my main issue is they focus a little too much on them. Like, it's nice seeing the old characters, but, like, we need... This time, it should focus more on the old, on the new characters now. Because their storylines are basically done. Well, sadly, except Harry's. Because Harry's storyline technically doesn't end as well. And they focus a little too much on them. Like, they keep focusing on Hermione and Ron's relationship. But why would you need to do that? We already know they're in love. They're married. They have two kids. We don't need any more, like, oh, they're in love with each other. Like, we don't need more of that. We already know they are love. I don't need to be reminded of that. I've seen eight, eight of the movies. I've read all seven books. I do not need to be reminded of that. Because, like, listen, I like that they're a couple and everything. But we don't need to be keep reminded of that. We're not idiots. Anyway, that's one thing that kind of annoys me a bit. Like, they focus a bit too much on them. And they do have lots of, a few out-of-character moments, like I mentioned, with Hermione and Ron. And Ro Ron was a bit too jokesty for me. I wish he was a little more serious. Like, I can understand if they make him jokesty a bit because, you know, works in a shop and, you know, dealt with the Ross loss of Fred. So, I can imagine if they tried, tried to turn comedy a bit, became like Fred and George, basically, seeing how I guess they would have became a little sadder. But, yeah, that, I, like, he did become a bit, like, not serious and that much. He was, I kind of wish they did make him a little more serious. Like, in the more serious moments, fine. Like, they should have, like, made him more serious. But, in the, like, you know, being a family man kind of guy, I can understand. So, yeah, Harry as well. I forgot to mention this in my inconsistencies part. But here's the thing. Wouldn't... Harry says he doesn't have that much practice with parenting. But what about Teddy Tonks? Teddy Tonks, if you don't know, is actually the son of... Well, Teddy Lupin, actually. Teddy Lupin, actually. That's his name. But anyway, there's Teddy Lupin. Now, he's the son of Remus Lupin and uh, of of uh, Nymphadora Tonks. And they both died at the Battle of Hogwarts. Now, Remus says that... Remus actually told Harry, like, a few months before, that he made him his godfather. 
that he made uh, his son Harry's godfather or something like that. Actually, no, wait, no, sorry. Like, Ted, like Teddy Lupin's godfather is Harry. So that means Harry should have some practice with that. He should have already had some practice with with parenting. So that kind of makes... So the whole thing that he's still having practice makes no sense. And where the heck was he in this story? Because in the Deathly Hallows ending, they mentioned that they saw Teddy, who was with another person, in in King's Cross, which makes no sense at all. Like, why did they not mention him in this story at all? Because he was mentioned at the end of the Deathly Hallows that I just pointed out. And here, in the epilogue scene, where this, which is basically the start of the story, he's not mentioned. Makes no sense. So now, anyway, let's talk... And also, I'd like to mention Draco. He's probably the character that grows the most out of here, actually. And I'm kind of glad they did. Because they did make him more of, like, the mean character, the bully, basically, in the other Harry Potter books. But here, he actually grows. You know, he isn't more... He isn't... He doesn't have that prejudice on Muggleborns and Muggles and such. He seems to be more, like, basically a nice person. And that has probably has to do with his wife and... I forgot his her, his wife's name, but his wife actually did have more liberal views on muggles and muggleborns and such. And I did like that. He also mentioned, of like, in the alternate timeline, actually, how Draco said, like, you do have a bit of your mother in you. And he didn't say it as a bad thing, actually. He said it more like a compliment, kind of, because he, cause around this time, I'm guessing his wife still dies, but he's like, he, he tells his son, just be careful how well on, on how you use it or something. Which means... He do, which means, in those timelines, he cares about his son. He actually cares about his son. And here, you can tell that he cares about his son and such. And I, I'm not going to keep repeating that, because, you know... Yeah, but... Yeah, I like I like Draco. Pretty cool. Now, here are the new characters. The new characters are Albus, Rose, Scorpius, and... Hugo, Lily, and James. But we focus more on Albus and Scorpius. Now... I like Scorpius. Scorpius is pretty cool. Like, I like him how, even though the rumor thing's kind of stupid, you do kind of feel bad for him seeing how people are mean to him and such, and also how his mother dies. You know, he has to, you know, you know, his character is pretty good. And Albus, I like Albus as well. You do feel bad for him that he's being basically bullied at school because he's not like his father. But his character could have been much better better if they like continued on more on that so yeah anyway uh yeah now let's talk about my final thoughts so the story did have some potential with if they focused on albus at his time at hogwarts focused less on the character on the old characters like harry ron hermione Ginny, and draco then i would have been fine with this story they just focused it on Albus and his identity crisis and introduce us to the new characters, you know, the, the kids, basically, and his friendship with Scorpius, then this would have been pretty good. But no, the bad writing, like, the bad story ruins this, like, like, drags this down. I'm sorry, it's just bad fan fiction, which is the title it has been received. Like, the story is terrible, and the characters are just okay. Like, that's my final thoughts. Like, that's, that's all I can leave it up with. So yeah, because of the bad story, or yeah, the terrible story and the okay characters, I'll give it a C minus. Because it is, I do like seeing Harry, Ron, and Hermione again, and I do like, you know, some of the new characters like Scorpius and stuff. But yeah, so that's what I think. It deserves a C minus, nothing else. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'm sorry if it's like long, it's like 50, 50 minutes. But yeah, so... If you like this video and like my Harry Potter stuff that I'm putting out, my next video will be Harry Potter, which is a review on maybe something Fantastic Beasts. But yeah, so hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you later. Bye.